Good morning. This is Dr. John Bennett broadcasting from Miami Beach. It's here in the morning. It's evening in India uh, of Neurosurgical TV. We have the 12th in a series of 12 webcasts of neuroendoscopy done by Dr. Yadav. And let me quickly show everyone and the link. We have all 12 webcasts on one page. So you can pick your or the topic that you may be weak in or, or whatever. Uh, so that link is in on Neurosurgical TV and on this webcast. And let me introduce the moderator, Naranjan Swami. He's a professor at the NSCB Medical College in Jabalpur, India, the same institution as Dr. Yadav. Welcome, Dr. Swami. Yeah, good evening. Good evening in this part of the world and welcome everybody, Very every delegate. Uh, we have come to the last session of uh, the endoscopic lectures hosted by Professor Yadav. As you all know, Professor Yadav is president of NSI and then a teacher who has taught more than 800 students and then his accolades are so much that he has conducted live workshops and webinars and they start almost all children. He also, also conducting two fellowships in his own college to train them. So, you know, and, uh, by doing a live surgery, he has authored many books and one of some of the articles have been having citation of more than 10,000, a man of a great achievement. So, not say more. And I also welcome other panelists, Professor Dendapani, who is an enthusiastic endoscopic neurosurgeon as well as a fine spinal surgeon uh, in uh, one of the premier institute, PJ Chandigarh. And welcome Dr. Dendapani. And Dr. Shailendra Ratre, welcome to you. He's uh, assisting Professor Yadav and then very accomplished endoscopic neurosurgeon. And then he's ready to do almost everything. And we also have Dr. Jitin, who is an endoscopic neurosurgeon as well as an epilepsy neurosurgeon. He also has done, you know, I must mention here that he has done endoscopic hemispherectomy to control the spread of epilepsy. And he's got great accolades. And you can see him on all webinars over there, very enthusiastic person. I'll not waste much of the time. I'll hand over the mic to Professor Yadav, sir. Thank you, uh, Professor Swami. Thank you, uh, Professor John Bennett. And I also thank all uh, the panelists and all the viewers uh, uh, for joining this uh, webinar. Uh, today, I'll be talking uh, on endoscopic management of intradural extramedullary spinal tumors. Uh, regarding the open versus um, the endoscopic approach, what is different? Um, uh, although there is an open approach or microscopic approach for uh, the sp uh, intradural spine, uh, intradural extramedullary tumor. Uh, but there's a more risk of post-operative spinal uh, instability and deformity in the long-term follow-up. And this is because uh, we usually go for bilateral muscle stripping. There's extensive laminectomy on both sides. And uh, at least on one side, there is a partial fastectomy. Uh, on the other hand, uh, endoscopy is a minimally invasive uh, technique. There is a no or uh, less risk of post-operative uh, instability. Um, and this is because there is only limited unilateral muscle stripping, um, uh, only unilateral laminectomy done, but you can go for bilateral decompression and the tumor in the, uh, the large tumor can be removed using unilateral approach. There is no injury uh, of the opposite uh, facet joint. So the opposite facet, the opposite lamina, the opposite side contralateral uh, muscles stripping is not required. So it's less invasive. There is uh, in open technique uh, because there is more trauma, so more pain. Uh, whereas in endoscopy, there's less pain the chances of neurological deterioration is also less in endoscopic surgery. The CSF leak is also less, increased less, uh, more uh, risk of CSF leak in open compared to endoscopy um, where there is a less chance. 
the reason is because there is a, a less dead space available in endoscopic surgery. The wound infection again more in open. The reason again is more dead space. And there is a difficulty in visualization of the opposite side if you, if you uh, take the unilateral course. Whereas in endoscopic uh, technique, it provides panoramic view uh, because of the angle uh, visualization. So better visualization of the opposite side. Um, indications of uh, intradural uh, extramedullary tumors, uh, the endoscopic surgery is usually tumor if it is uh, five centimeter or less, that means uh, two uh, spinal level, vertebral level. Uh, usually, but if the uh, if the attachment is at one point uh, from uh, the root, and if you can identify even the large lesion, also can be operated. Better if the tumor is placed posteriorly or posterolaterally, but with increasing experience, anterolateral um, tumor also can be uh, can can be. Uh, approach, but dead anterior uh, tumor, um, I, uh, this is a contraindication. Difficult when the lesion is extending more level, and especially when there is a, a long dural attachment, uh, as you see in the meningioma, or uh, a true uh, anterior uh, lesion. Uh, in the surgical pr procedure, the patient is placed prone, the localization is done using C-arm or preoperative MRI in dorsal spine because uh, there, there may be difficulty in mid-dorsal region. So you can have a marker <coughs> MRI, sorry. Um, you can use also pedicle, pedicle thinning, but uh, it's difficult, uh, especially when the lesion is large. So either um, CM uh, localization or preoperative marker MRI. The approach is from the side of pathology. Um, usually one side symptoms are more, the lesions are, uh, lesion is more on one side. So you approach from the side where um, the lesion is, uh, I mean, originating. The skin incision depends upon the size of the tumor. And this is about uh, three centimeters and about one centimeter away from the midline. Um, you separate uh, the muscles of the soft tissue um, away from the spinous process as usual when uh, uh, in the open surgery or microscopic surgery we do the off late after uh, having uh, some experience, we have started using the muscle sutures. Uh, so on paraspinal muscles, I applied deep uh, suture there and then retract it uh, laterally so that the muscle do not bulge inside the tubular retractor. And then you confirm the level again, create little extra space, uh, and this is done by drilling the base of the spinous process and uh, undercutting the opposite side, the uh, lamina. The scope is placed at the corner of the endoscope. Uh, I use uh, uh, this tubular retractor system, EasyGo, by the Carl Stores, in which the, uh, the, the endoscope is placed at the corner and in uh, other tubular retractor also, um, there is a provision to station the scope um, at the corner so that you get more uh, space to work. One should go for good hemostasis before you open the dura uh, using abgel, cautery, or bone wax. Uh, if the bleeding is from the bone, retract the dura by sutures. Uh, use thin suction and thin needle holder because if you use uh, thick instruments, then the space is limited and there will be hardly any space for the movement, especially linear movement of the instrument. So first you should go for tumor decompression. The retraction of the nerve can be done in the lumbar region using patties 
uh, you can place it superior or inferior to the tumor to avoid injury to the nerve root. Um, if there is a large lesion, and then uh, uh, I was also using the same technique, but uh, Professor Dandapani has um, named the sliding uh, delivery technique, which is excellent. So if the lesion is cranially placed, then you slide it uh, towards the operative area. And likewise, if it is quarterly placed, then you slide it cranially. So using a small incision, the large lesion um, can be operated. Uh, the tube uh, is retracted uh, slightly back when you go for dural suturing. This uh, creates little larger space. So when you uh, withdraw tube little uh, back, then you have more space for suturing and maneuvering of the instrument. The first suture knot is given at the end of the suture so that uh, no time is wasted uh, on applying the first suture. Uh, we use a dural substitute or muscle piece, um, which is tied at the end. So first suture uh, can be skipped uh, using this technique. Knot is applied outside at the end after stitching, and then you can slide it with the hook or uh, knot pusher. Uh, one can use anasto clip or povidone endo sutures are available for general surgery use. Unfortunately, these are too bulky to be used for neurosurgery. So with the available tubular retractor, this uh, povidone endo sutures ca cannot be used. But I think in coming uh, time, we will have a better technique for suture re removal, uh, suture application of suture. Uh, one can use uh, J-shaped needle for easy suturing or curved uh, needle holder, curved tip, um, uh, thin needle holder for suturing. This is a short video of uh, lumbar intradural tumor. This is the amazing the tumor, axial CT scan, as axial MRI, the incision, cranial, caudal, left, right. So medial, lateral, and cranial, caudal. So this is the lamina, L45 lamina is drilled. And now uh, after sort of axial drilling, you take out the bone. This is the spinous process. So this is also the base of the spinous process is also undercut and a little bit of opposite side lamina can also be removed. So this is the dural uh, incision. And after that, the incision is enlarged. Uh, one can use petty cranial and caudal petty so that uh, the in the lumbar region there is a problem that you get so many nerve root which is coming in your way. Um, I use now I have started using the du dural uh, stay sutures also. Initially I was not using it, but now I have started using it, uh, and it is quite useful. So first decompression, and then uh, you slide the sliding technique from cranial part. You you slide it uh, quarterly, uh, and then when detach it from uh, the attachment. So this is the tumor being removed after decompression, the usual bipolar forcept being used. And after the tumor removal, um, you can see that uh, 
there is only a rotational movement because there is hardly any space available. So you need to rotate and the first suture uh, is of the dura patch. And the end of suture, uh, the dura patch is tied so that you don't waste time in applying the first suture. And then again, just the rotation movement and using thin needle holder, which is curved tip, uh, you can apply sutures repair the dura under the endoscopic uh, control. So tight dural suturing. And then with the knot pusher, the knot is applied at the end. And this is the end of surgery. Uh, so this we have already discussed that the alignment of the needle with the needle holder should be such that the tip of the needle is at the deeper plane. See, if you hold uh, the needle uh, like this, then maybe your needle holder will strike the dura uh, before the tip uh, pierces the dura. So you should hold it in such a way that the tip is at a deeper plane. So it, it will pierce the dura before um, when uh, the tip of the needle or use J-shaped needle. Uh, which is available, uh, Johnson and Johnson, uh, they have j shaped needle also. But it can be done with the usual uh, needle uh, because at times it is out of the stock and uh, is not available. Um, the rotation technique should be used because there is hardly any space available there. So you cannot have linear movement. So uh, bring the needle uh, with the side of the uh, dural incision and then just rotate it. Uh, and using this uh, technique, you can uh, very easily uh, uh, go for uh, suturing of the dura. This is another uh, cervical spine. This, that was lumbar uh, spine intradural extramedullary tumor. This is cervical spine. Uh, tumor. So tumors of all locations uh, can be operated. Again, um, ipsilateral uh, lamina drilling until you find a small little, I mean, very thin uh, bone is left, uh, which is removed with the fine carison punch. And uh, the base of the spinous process is also drilled to create little extra space, especially for uh, um, uh, dural suturing. That is useful for suturing. Otherwise, uh, it may not be required. So dural incision, enlargement of the incision. You see the tumor. Now I have started using uh, the space sutures to retract the dura. Initially, I was just uh, doing without this, but I think it's quicker and uh, so initial decompression of the tumor so that you don't uh, damage the compressed cord. And once you have done sufficient uh, decompression, then you can roll it.
uh, use you can uh, do bimanual dissection use uh, uh, bipolar forcep for uh, and this is the attachment the, from the root and again uh, dural suturing Only the rotational movement, the linear movement. Again, I am repeating because this is very important. Uh, there is no space for linear movement. So after dual suturing, you can you or uh, sometime if you have some doubt, you can use a tissue glue. So this is the end. Uh, results, we have done 82 cases some time back of all locations. The age range from uh, 21 to 72 years. Swanoma, meningioma, arachnidosis, total excision could be achieved in all patients. Average duration of surgery was uh, 140 minutes, which is comparable to um, the microscopic approach. Uh, once you uh, achieve the learning curve, the blood loss is also very little. There was no unstable spine, no CSF leak or infection. The post-operative stay is also um, comparable. Uh, this is one such example of cervical intradural extramedullary tumor. And this is after surgery. You can see the amount of uh, bone uh, the laminectomy done uh, is small, and uh, there is a drilling of the spinous process, base of the spinous process, and little bit of opposite side lamina to remove uh, the tumor. This is dorsal level, preoperative and postoperative complete excision. So the advantage of endoscopic surgery is that it is minimally invasive, safe, and effective. Comparable operating time to microscope, less blood loss, tumor of all locations, uh, cervical, dorsal, lumbar region can be removed. Uh, posterior or uh, anterior lateral tumor can be removed, but uh, dead anterior tumor uh, one should avoid significantly decrease dead space, less chances of CSF leak. Preservation of facet joint muscles with uh, improved spinal stability, even in cases of foraminal tumors. Uh, but there are limitations, difficulty in removal of the large lesion, large tumor extending more than two vertebrae. You need a larger uh, incision. Uh, and uh, when uh, there is a broad base meningioma, which is fibrous, and sometimes calcified, then there is a difficulty, although you can use QSA. There's a steep learning curve, pure anteriorly placed tumor, difficulty in uh, dural suturing in the initial learning curve. So in such case, you can use dural substitute fibrin glue, uh, no. retract tubular retractor back to get some extra space for suturing. One can also use anastoclip or COVID in endosutures, which uh, I think will, will be available in the near future. Uh, for detail, uh, uh, you can refer to uh, our article published in um, Journal uh, Neurological Surgery A, that is Central European Neurosurgery, and the the chapter by uh, Professor Dandapani um, on minimally invasive endoscopic approach for cervical for a spinal intradural tumor in uh, uh, our book, uh, uh, the neuroendoscopic surgery a comprehensive approach. To conclude, endoscopic removal of selected intradural extramedullary tumor is effective alternative to microsurgery, 
with the advantage of minimal invasive technique, there is less blood loss, tumor of all locations can be removed and uh, significantly decrease dead space, decreased chances of CSF leak infection with preservation of facet joint and muscles, uh, at least of the opposite side, and thereby improving the spinal stability. Uh, but there is a downside of it. There's a learning curve, especially uh, in the dural suturing, which can be overcome by the practice. And uh, uh, you can have difficulty in meningioma, especially the, the long uh, dural attachment, fibrous and calcified and pure anteriorly placed tumor. So in future, I think we'll have better, better techniques and better instruments uh, so most of the cases uh, will be done by endoscopic approach. Thank you very much. Thanks. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you for dealing the subject with extensive discussion about the advantages and disadvantage. As I can see, the advantages are so many that you don't destroy the facet joint you do by... Network issue, sir. I think your uh, yeah, his connection. Yeah, so he'll, he'll come back. Do you want to continue uh, monitoring someone? Sir, uh, if you permit, sir, I'll invite uh, Professor Dandapani sir to give his comments. Uh, so thank you for the wonderful lecture and beautiful videos. Uh, you have been a pioneer in endoscopy in most of the neurosurgical areas. So um, kind of it is really inspiring to look at uh, how you have uh, utilized the simple uh, tools to overcome challenges rather than relying on complex uh, systems. So what would be your advice to young neurosurgeons when they want to have one system? for doing wide variety of endoscopic spine surgeries. So which system would you recommend? Uh, difficult thing, but I think uh, any tubular retractor is better compared to uh, the prefix. Like, for example, I, I don't want to discuss this, but uh, they stand to versus Easygo. They have uh, any system which has unnecessarily occupied the space and there's a limitation in bimanual dissection. So any tube which has a lot of space is good enough, whether it is of any company, but uh, predetermined channel, uh, this is for uh, working channel, this is for that. So that I don't like because for advanced surgery and especially for these kind of tumor and for AD where you want to put in a screw, uh, these uh, predetermined channel, um, are not so good. And you are right that uh, uh, for young neurosurgeon, it is very difficult to purchase each and everything. For one procedure, you purchase one thing. For another, you purchase another thing. So buy one single simple thing. Uh, any tubular retractor is good enough, uh, which should have facilities to station endoscope at the corner. So I think many of these uh, systems are available. So do you use the holder or uh, does the assistant hold the endoscope sir, in, your, uh, in your surgeries? No, but then, yeah, I don't. Uh, the system which I use uh, has an option that uh, the, the endoscope can be placed at the corner of the tubular retract. So I use to, uh, the EasyGo system in which there is a provision inbuilt provision that the endoscope is stationed at the corner. Yeah, but if you don't have, then you can have a tubular retractor, but that uh, you require two holder, one to hold the tube and one to hold the telescope. Or you can ask uh, your assistant to hold the scope for you. Yes, that also can be done. Yeah, and you use, uh, uh, like in the EasyGo system, it is the angled uh, endoscopes which is fixed on to the system. But when you have your own customized version, when you have tubular retractors and you can use a wide variety of endoscopes, 0, 30, 45, 
like depending upon the need we have noted that the more anterior the tumor is then you can do a wide lateral entry then you can use angled endoscopes in comparison to the posterior tumors in which uh, the zero degree endoscopes are good enough you want do you want to comment on that sir thank yes, you excellent uh, question so what uh, you can do uh, i agree um, i had uh, only zero degree endoscope in the beginning when i started for quite long period uh, so i angulate the endoscope to make it angled endoscope so same way you angulate your tubular retractor along with your endoscope so if you angulate zero degree tubular retractor or endoscope to 10 degree or 20 degree it will become 20 degree endoscope yeah right. but if you have more more uh, more variety you are right it's good yeah uh, so i request my other co-panelists to comment and ask uh, uh, professor yadav sir any question Rathri, sir please uh, Good evening, sir. Very nice presentation, sir. Uh, sir, one thing I uh, want to ask uh, that uh, the, this suturing technique is a uh, uh, little difficult. So, is there any option to uh, either left this the uh, dura open by reinforcing with glue or fat in initial cases? Yes, it can be done. Uh, you are right, but I I was told uh, that even anasto clip is available. Uh, the the cardiac surgeon, they use uh, uh, the uh, sort of clip, uh, so that also can be used, and I saw Dr. Rohidas using that. So, and these are uh, inexpensive. If you have problem, if you, are, you don't have access to all these things, there are places we must agree, we, we should uh, appreciate this. I mean, not all places are so, uh, I mean, uh, they don't have facilities of all these things. So in that case, because the dead space is less, uh, you can just leave it like that, keep the um, uh, dural substitute there and put in some glue. So this also will work. Yes, sir. And plus some uh, delayed suture removal, or if something happens, then you can put in um, uh, lumbar drain for some time. Uh, but we have not come across any CSF leak uh, because the dead space is very little. You can just put in some muscle over the dura uh, and uh, I mean, um, the dead space should be obliterated. So can I comment on this aspect, uh, if you permit? Yeah, yeah. Uh, so regarding the uh, dural closure, we had noticed that in cervical and lumbar, where you have a good uh, muscle bulk and uh, the depth of surgery is quite much. So even if you don't close the dura, it is okay because there is the muscles fall back and they seal it nicely. But in the dorsal area, in lean patients, the depth of surgery is very shallow. So there is not much soft tissue. Directly, you are close to the dura. So in such cases, we have noticed that it is better and it is easier also to close the dura and we should close the dura because there is not much soft tissue to seal it. So uh, do you want to uh, add to this? Sir? Yes, you are absolutely right. And plus, if you don't uh, find uh, comfortable enough with this, I think um, uh, using those uh, hemilaminectomy retractor or something and use microscope. So with that also, with the same incision, you can close the dura. So in initial part of your learning curve, if you find problem in uh, suturing dura, and then you can do uh, what Professor Dandapani has said, and it is essential in the dorsal region to repair. And in most cases, I think it is better to repair. It is possible. Thank you, sir. Sir, uh, I have a question, sir. Uh, do we have a difference in strategies for selecting uh, cervical dorsal and lumbar tumors, particularly from patient selection to amount of bone drilling to movement of dissectors? Please tell us. Yeah, uh, I no special uh, strategy for uh, cervical or dorsal or this thing. The only thing which is different is 
that in uh, uh, cranial part uh, for a right-handed person, the cranial portion, dura, um, suturing, uh, you need little more space. Uh, if the dural um, incision goes right up to the lamina cranially, I find difficult uh, difficulty in closing. So I remove a little more lamina on cranial side. This is uh, the, and that applies in all cases, whether it is dorsal or uh, cervical or this thing. Uh, the other uh, difference in cervical and dorsal or lumbar is that I use patties in uh, um, the lumbar region because there we have a lot of uh, roots coming out. Uh, once you, once you um, make a, uh, a dural opening, uh, so, uh, uh, to avoid the uh, injury by the suction um, on uh, to the root, uh, it is better to put in uh, some patties, uh, cranial cotton, but no pressure uh, space. Uh, I avoid putting in patties in dorsal and cervical region, but in lumbar, yes. Thank you, sir. Sir, with the sliding delivery, with the availability of sliding delivery technique, what amount, what length of dura should be opened, sir? Complete uh, over the tumor or some 75%, 80% like that? I mean, uh, uh, but that sliding technique can only be used when you have uh, uh, the attachment uh, is at that level, uh, which you have exposed. Uh, if the dural attachment, supposing it is a meningioma, large meningioma, and although that kind of things are very extremely rare, usually you have dural attachment which is of uh, one segment or one and a half segment, not more than that. So uh, this works. So very important is where is the origin or, or from which route it is coming. So if you the lesion is very large uh, and uh, the uh, supposing attachment, uh, dural uh, attachment is at D6 and you have opened it at D2, D3, then you cannot do that. So proper planning, but obviously after decompression, um, the sliding technique which Professor Dandapani has described uh, is correct. I mean, uh, we can uh, request him to give a little more uh, comments about the sliding technique. Uh, sir, uh, thank you for quoting that article, sir. Sir, actually we used, uh, we have been using this method for all schwannomas. Like if we consider schwannomas as uh, not having any significant dural attachment and they are only closely adherent to a root and uh, we can gently peel off it, then in that situation, as the question goes, uh, uh, Dr. Uh, Jitin, that what is the length of the dural incision. So we consider it like a cesarean section. So you give the length of the incision in cesarean section, not according to the height of the child, but as per the breadth of the child. So it doesn't matter how long is the tumor. What matters is what is the breadth of the tumor. So if you can get the breadth of the tumor out a little bit, and uh, for any tumor, including cranial, we never do the delivery in one go. We just a little bit get it out of the dural incision and we gently peel all the uh, kind of uh, the, the rootlets which are stuck or adherent to the tumor. And then gradually the whole tumor comes out, like how a baby is uh, taken out of the incision in the cesarean section. Thank you, sir. Okay. Thank you, sir. Sir, uh, there is one question from Dr. Joan. Uh, in meningioma cases with mismatch between tail and tumor, the durotomy is according with tumor size or tail size? Um, it is, uh, if its tail size is quite extensive, then uh, I think it is better to avoid it. If the dural attachment is very large, if it is one segment, one and a half segment, whether it is tail or attachment, whatever, because uh, the aim of surgery is uh, to remove uh, the dural attachment along with the tail. Otherwise, uh, there will be recurrence. Thank you, sir. 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 Th
So if you find that the, either the dural attachment is uh, longer or the tail is also going uh, quite extensively, then it is better to go for open surgery. So you have to consider both of them, attachment and tail, both are important. Thank you, sir. Another question, sir. What is the best way to practice endoscopic suturing? Uh, uh, suture, uh, I mean, practice on model. Dr. Jitin has, um, uh, I mean, described the uh, indigenous inexpensive model. And there are other models also. So those models do not cost anything. So you practice on model. And uh, this is how everything has a learning curve. So with gracefully practicing things, uh, things become uh, when simple and uh, possible. So there is a learning curve. Uh, things are not as simple as uh, that. You, you have a learning curve in microscopic surgery also. Uh, if for any technique, you have to be, I mean, uh, genuinely interested in that and uh, you have to spend uh, quite a lot of time in learning that technique. Thank you, sir. We have Professor Kodishwan, sir. Professor yes. Kodishwan. Good evening. Good evening, sir. Good evening, Yadav, sir. Dandabani, sir. Good. Jitin, John. Actually, it was a wonderful lecture, sir. So, I have two, three questions, sir. One, uh, for, uh, Example, if you have, uh, because in this case, we are operating in a small space. What is the risk of uh, post-operative hematoma, sir, in higher levels, number one. Number two, if there is a missing level of tumor, most of the time, if you open at one level, the tumor sometimes migrate to higher levels. Then how will you proceed, sir? Yeah, but uh, I think uh, the AM... Uh, about the hematoma formation, don't blindly put pull pull that um, uh, Dr. Dandapani uh, have uh, been given the name, but all of us have been using uh, the uh, sort of sliding technique. If there's a lesion cranial caudal, then we try to move it to the center where we are operating. But in the process, we have to be uh, I mean, careful that any resistance which is coming, um, if there is a dural attachment coming from cranial side, and if you find some resistance, then you have to extend your dural incision. So if by sliding uh, gently, it is coming without uh, resistance, then it is fine. But if you have uh, some resistance, then don't try to pull it and uh, cause uh, tear and hemorrhage. Then it will be difficult to control. Usually, this does not happen in um, in uh, neurofibroma, well selected in season uh, from the attachment. But uh, for for meningioma, yes, you have to be careful. So hematoma, don't pull it blindly. Uh, gently try to uh, uh, deliver it towards uh, the working area uh, and uh, go for proper hemostasis before you remove the, that upper or lower hole. Uh, so can I add to this? Other question? Yeah. Yeah, please, please. Uh, sir, uh... Sir, for beginners, I would like to um, kind of suggest that uh, the understanding of the plane of the tumor is very important. Like the most of the schwannomas are extra arachnoidal and all meningiomas are also extra arachnoidal. So whenever we get into the, uh, the tumor area, we will have to get into the correct plane. We should never be in the subarachnoid space because most of the vessels are in the subarachnoid space. So if you remain in the extra arachnoidal plane, you are unlikely to damage any vessels because the vessels are there extra dural and the vessels are there in the subarachnoid space. So remain outside the arachnoid and between the tumor capsule and the arachnoid, then in that case, the dissection is likely to be smooth, both in meningiomas as well as in schwannomas. 
so we have noticed that um, this has been very helpful not only in uh, uh, spinal tumors but including in the uh, endoscopic surgeries in brain tumors also so most of the benign tumors they respect the plane the, the arachnoid plane is always respected yeah of course there are invasive tumors metastasis and such things in those scenarios you have to be more careful so what is the role of the tonle dural graft sir recently there are dural grafts which can be placed only without suturing yeah there is only and inlay both so uh, this can be done inlay is usually little better compared to only but for csf rhinorrhea the study shows that there is hardly any difference if you put inlay or uh, only but i think if you are using uh, graft only it is better that uh, you use inlay uh, and the graft should be little larger than uh, but obviously don't uh, uh, cause compression on the cord or root but you can put it only also or both uh, inlay and only and then glue multi layer closure also can be done thank you sir thank but you, sir. i will try i insist insisted on dural suturing although it took me a long time um, uh, to initially do it but uh, once you do it then uh, there is no problem i mean once you learn it then uh, it doesn't take more time thank you sir sir uh, this question from dr deepak uh, where could we find uh, the models for endoscopic suturing we have to get training somewhere or we can purchase it so we can just tell briefly about it sir. yeah you tell uh, you have this uh, model thank you uh, how to make it yeah please so, sir i mean it's your idea sir uh, one can just uh, paste or pin a suture over the glove and then can uh, make an incision over it and then uh, over that uh, foam with glove uh, one can put a clay shaped model over that the height can be around 9 to 10 cm and the width on the top of the model can be opening can be around 3 cm and then one can practice uh, uh, using the endoscope uh, switching over it so i have uh, sent him the reference also of the article another question is there uh, which artificial dural substitute is better does it interfere with the repeat surgery which uh, artificial dural substitute is better and does it interfere with the repeat surgery this may cause yes uh, fibrosis we use um, dural substitute uh, dura patch by uh, what uh, that is um, duragen duragen and also uh, sergivir you have a dural substitute Deeper. also yeah g patch so but uh, i think all of them cause uh, some fibrosis yes model i think i have that model uh, figure but i don't know where it is so you can you have given the reference of that model that yes, article yes sir. and, and that is the freely article of... yes okay there are no more questions sir um, okay you can then have concluding comments yes concluding comments. so thank you very much uh, and thank all the panelists and i thank uh, uh, john sir for giving this opportunity thank you everyone thank you kodai thank you uh, danda pani jitin and i think uh, uh, dr uh, dr ratri and uh, uh, dr swami uh, there must be some problem uh, maybe the issue of um, this uh, what internet problem so thank you everyone so today we finished uh, quite early <laughs> yeah yeah thanks everybody for participating and especially dr yadav 
And I want to uh, reiterate that this is all uh, in, in a, uh, uh, it's called a playlist. It's called a playlist in YouTube. It's in other words, it's all the videos. They're all separated every week from the last 12 weeks. And I left a link in the uh, chat as well as on the website of Neurosurgical TV. So you can watch each particular episode separately. If you have a weak part, you can concentrate on that. And we look forward to having other webinars with Dr. Yadav uh, under his direction uh, shortly, and we'll let everyone know. Thank you very much. Thank, thank, you. You. thank you. Thank All you. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. John. Thank you, Dr. Yadav.